Ryan with Goodman Racing. We just got back with our budget NC that we just finished racing at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Um, just pulled it out of the trailer and just thought it'd be kind of cool to show you the car as it came off the racetrack. Um, we, uh, aside from some tape that we had on the headlights, uh, that's, that's basically as it ran in the final session on day two. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look. Go ahead and walk around the car and, and check things out. Uh, this is our, our budget NC. Um, a lot of people are kind of joking, oh, it doesn't look very budget. You know, we spent the first year of this build doing a super budget uh, focused kind of approach, which was, you know, $5,000 car, $500 junkyard, 2.5 liter engine, you know, uh, simple parts, have a lot of fun with it. And then we wanted a, a higher goal. So we decided, hey, let's get really crazy with our goals and decided to take this car and race it at the biggest time attack uh, race in the US. Now, obviously that means you're gonna spend some more money because you've got to prep it for the class. You've got to have certain safety stuff. You need more power, stuff like that. But keep in mind, these are all, aside from like the splitter, this is all off the shelf parts. Um, and just about every part on this car, we could have gone with a more expensive thing. You know, we could have gone with Olin's versus the Meister R coilovers. Uh, we could have gone with, you know, uh, crazy big brakes instead of our budget BBK. Um, for the most part, every single part on this we could have done something fancier but we didn't want to we wanted to show what you can build and then just kind of go race it in a, a really big event and uh you know basically what we weren't even expecting to do very well we just wanted to have a great time at circuit of the americas we ended up doing pretty well we were solidly mid-pack um and as for that budget thing everything is relative the other cars in the class were, this thing was half, if not a quarter of the cost of a lot of the other cars. Time Attack cars are $100,000 builds minimum and up from there. So it was pretty cool to be out there on track and dicing it up with those guys with this car. Uh, it, it was definitely a testament to what the NC can do. Um, so let's go over what it's got. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, I'll pop the hood. That's where we should start. So this has a 2.5 liter engine straight from the junkyard for about 500 bucks. I'll get out, get the shadow off the, the engine here. Uh, this has Fab 9's new GT turbo kit, which is their budget oriented kit. Um, it's got our coolant expansion tank. It's got a triple pass radiator, which is really crucial to keep the, uh, the temperatures down and help it survive uh, hard use, especially with the turbo. Um, and uh, we've got the singular hood vents, which you can see in the hood up here. Uh, those also really help with cooling. Um, you can see the tops of the shocks here. Not, not very easy to see anything else of the shocks, but Meister R coilovers. Um, how did the coilovers do? Uh, well, they are a budget option, definitely. Um, yeah, the car would be faster on Olin's. Anytime I'm hitting a curb or something like that, the Olin's would soak it up a lot better than the Meisters were doing. But we kind of wanted to show just how much you can do with something like the Meister. So this is the Meister R Club Race coilover, and we've bumped up the spring rates to, I believe it's 13K uh, and something, actually I can't remember what the rear spring rate is, but it's uh, a 13K front spring. I mean, it needs all the spring rate it can get because we're on 255, 4017 Yokohama A052 tires on our 17 by 10 Koenig Hypergrams. So needed spring rate, needed a bunch of sway bar for all that roll resistance. We put a Progress RX-8 sway bar in there and then the standard NC Progress rear sway bar. That ended up working really nicely. The big fat front sway bar helped to keep things planted. Um, and then to compensate for having that bigger bar, we ended up setting the rake of the car with the, the tail up just a little bit. And these cars really liked the rake um, to help it rotate. So that worked out really well. Um, gotta mention the splitter uh this is a blackbird fabric special that they made for us just before uh the weekend before the event um and then actually the canards here uh moti of blackbird fabrics was at the event with us he made those in the garage um overnight between saturday and sunday to help us get a little more front bite um come around this way you can see the uh the 17 by 10 koenig hypergram wheels um, this Yokohama is just a fat tire. I mean, it's like when you look at the 
uh, the size it says it is, which is a 255, and how it fits on a 10, this fits like a Hoosier. I mean, these are super wide. You can actually, you know, if you put this next to like an RE71R or most other 255s, this is like half an inch wider minimum. Um, but the 17 by 10 fits on the car. Uh, substantial fender roll for it to fit with this tire, but any other 255, or if you're doing a 245 or something like that, um, that's gonna fit with just a, a standard fender roll. So that's really cool. Um, in there, you've got our budget big brakes. Uh, it's a 12.2 inch rotor, uh, wheelwood caliper option for four or six piston. We've got the six on there because it needs it, uh, especially with the power. Um, and I would say, you know, we're all about testing things and seeing how they do. Uh, that is not supposed to be a big brake kit that's like the last brakes you'll ever need, no matter how much power and, and what you're doing with the car. Um, we could use bigger brakes at Circuit of the America. Circuit of the America is crazy hard on brakes. And so we definitely found the limits of these. We had to swap rotors in between days. Um, if you were gonna be racing the car at Circuit of the Americas regularly, we'd recommend the next level up on brakes. But these did the job. These stopped me every time uh, down the back straight, it hauled the car to a stop. So, you know, consumables, we went through those faster, but everything, everything worked. It stopped. Um, inside the car, uh, we put a, a Sparco Evo 2 seat. Um, you've got to have all the safety stuff, obviously. Uh, Sparco six-point harness. Um, fire extinguisher down there. That's a Blackbird Fabworks fire extinguisher kit. Uh, big thanks to Moti for that. We actually used that fire extinguisher uh, a few weeks ago in testing, which is good. Keep the car from uh, being on fire. That's always a plus. Um, kind of difficult to see it, but it's got the Blackbird Fabworks RZ bar in there, and that is just a, a killer bar. Um, maximizes headroom, allows for the soft top. Um, I just can't say enough good things about it. All the plastic fits around it once you trim, all of that good stuff. Um, we've got a DG Motorsports hardtop on here. Now, we don't sell these hardtops anymore, but you can still call DG Motorsports and have one made for you. Um, back here, Nine Lives Racing uh, wing. We put this on. This is actually a scratch and dent that was sitting in the back of our shop. Um, and we were like, hey, we need a wing for the car for this event. So Nine Lives Racing wing. These come in aluminum. We wrapped it in black just for it to kind of match the car a little bit better. But super easy to install, super easy to adjust. And Blackbird Fabrics made us some, uh, some disco end plates here just to maximize performance and get some of their signature blue on the car as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the car's still covered in tire boogers and, and dirt. We've got we've to gotta clean it. We've got to, you know, tweak a couple of things, do a service on it and all of that. But uh, overall, the car did awesome, and we couldn't be happier with, uh, with how that event went. It was a ton of fun, and uh, we'll probably do some more cool stuff with this car in the future.